Hello and welcome back. I'm, I've been having so much trouble with the time. Yesterday I did my Facebook Live at um, 2 o'clock Sydney time. No, yes, at 2 o'clock Sydney time, which was only 1 o'clock Brisbane time and I'm supposed to be on Brisbane time. So anyway, I'm also confused. I'm back to Brisbane time because it is now two o'clock on my computer. Don't you love the way not everything adjusts? And three o'clock on my watch. So I'm sure it's three o'clock in Sydney, two o'clock in Brisbane, and anyway, here we are. So today I wanted to come to you from inside the training. Yesterday I talked a bit about coming back to basics or taking your horse back to basics and what that meant and how long it takes and, and so forth. And I had quite a few of you asking me how I would go about that and my idea was just to to go with the online training and start at module one so what I wanted to show you today was how you can go about that so I'm here you can see the um, front page of my website so if you come along to here you can see this is a little video on there for you to find out what's inside the training and it gives you a brief sort of overview of what you'll find in there and then discusses the different levels of membership and then the, the 100 day email series. If you're not getting my 100 day email series, please go and get it because we have a lot of fun on there chatting and um, learning new things and having discussions about various interesting topics. People are getting quite involved. The other thing on the first page here is um, the free training I've got out at the moment. So if you don't have that, go and get it anyway. So go along to the top menu and you'll see my library. Now, if you already own the course, that's where you'll find your course. If you've got the free training tips, you'll also find those free training tips in here. The free training tips really are just that. They're little videos, um, different ideas, different tips, different uh, lessons, and they are free. The only thing you need to do is just put your email address in this and that makes you um, a library so if you have anything else you'll be able to find that in the library so here we've got the horse training course which is what we're going to look at today so just click on the horse training course and this takes you through to the Kandu Equine online training system so yesterday we talked about the two different sorts of people that we had that were wanting to go back to basics and I suggested that they come here and they work through each of the lessons one by one. So you can see here, there's um, there's nine lessons on this first page. Then we need to go over to the next page, and there's another nine here, and then there's a final page where you can find some case studies and some resources. So let's go back to the first one and I want to show you where I suggest you start. So once you've logged in, the one of the problems, I've been building this um, online training system for many years now and I this is, you know, what I have come up with to make it the easiest to navigate and I've listened to what people have said about it and, you know, the thing that they find most difficult is that with other systems it's not so much a system as a collection of videos and they have to go searching through things and I didn't want that I didn't want people getting lost in it I wanted to to be really simple so what I've done is I've set it out in such a way that you can simply go in and work your way from the very first video all the way through to the end so this is just the welcome video and it will give you an explanation of how to work through the material and anything you might want to there's a there's a road map there to help you work through the material you'll also find on every page you can comment so if you get a bit lost you'll get a bit lost from time to time if you get a bit lost just write me a comment because I'm in there several times a day replying to people's comments so the first little um, set of videos is the engagement zone and this is really important we were discussing this again um, just the other day and how important it is that we 
learn how to assess our horse's emotional level and learn how to raise and lower the emotional level. Now, one of the people that I suggested, um, Sarah, who I suggested at the weekend, she go back to basics with her mare. Her mare was getting very anxious and only when she was out, like she used to be anxious all the time, but now she was getting really anxious when she was out. And I discussed with her this raising and lowering of the emotional level. And um, it's very tempting if you've got a horse that's very emotional, just to always try to um, lower that emotional level. So you're always trying to calm the horse down. Unfortunately, that really doesn't work. In order to calm the horse down, we first have to know how to increase the emotional level, so how to raise that emotional level a bit. And that's that's the first thing to do. So you can't simply um, lower the emotional level. It's very important that you learn how to raise it and then you can offer the opportunity the horse the opportunity to relax but it's not just you know it's a what goes up must come down sort of a deal and unless it goes up it's going to be very hard to lower the emotional level getting the emotional level right and getting your horse into the engagement zone with this very first module is sort of 80 percent of your training once you learn to raise and lower the emotional level and once you learn when the horse is in the engagement zone which is a great place to be learning then you can start moving the feet where you want them to go now i find give to the beard is the best and the fastest and the least stressful way of getting a horse into that engagement zone that's why i've put this module first it's the first time we really start moving things on the horse because the engagement zone is more of a theoretical thing i want you to look at your horse and recognize where its emotional level is but this is really the first module where we get to work on doing things with the horse so with all these foundation lessons that's six major foundation lessons in total the first one is give to the bit and they all come with a full-length DVD. Now, that's on the training here. That's on the internet. You can watch that right here. Hello and welcome. I'll just pause it. So that's, um, yeah, one hour, just over an hour. Um, and you can, you can watch that here. So if you go back then, and I advise you to watch that video first before you go into the smaller lessons. So what I've done is I've put all the information in there, but then I've broken down the lesson into these smaller parts. And I've discussed mostly, so there's four extra lessons here, then we go over the page. Um, that goes up to nine. And I think we've got a couple more and give to the bit because this is so important that we have something about bits as well. So with these ones, we'll just randomly have a look at one. And let's have a look at this one discusses the head position of the horse. In these nine little extra lessons, they're mostly quite short. And what I've done is I've discussed the things that people so have happening? the most trouble with. So this is just a short video. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to have to scroll through hours of video. This is just under four minutes long. And all I'm doing is I'm looking at the head position of the horse. And so it really hones in on those little details that people have trouble with. So, you know, the one before we're talking about how much pressure and that's a really common question I get asked with give to the bit you know I want my horse to travel in this frame I want him to be really soft in the bridle but how much pressure do I actually need and this one this just under eight minutes long this lesson so again you don't have to go through hours and hours of video you can come in here and say right this is exactly what I need to know where's five to ten minutes on just that thing so teaching bridle for example you know some people have trouble getting the bridle on you know it's no way to start your horse learning give to the bit 
if you're having trouble getting the bridle on. So we cover all that foundation work to make for a very easy, stress-free lesson for you and the horse. So that's the first step. And I would work, I would spend time on that. I think it's really important. Give to the bit. A lot of people look at it and if you look at the way that horse is travelling and it's in a frame, it's in a soft outline, my rein is quite loose. Some people say to me, well, I don't need that because I'm not going to ride my horse in dressage. And I say, well, it really has nothing to do with dressage, it has nothing really to do with frame. Give to the bit is about relaxation and about getting the horse into the engagement zone, which is that place where it's relaxed and learning and engaged with you and listening to you. So once you've got that, you can then move on to the shoulder control work. Now the shoulder control work is another foundation lesson. So you'll find that starts with a full length training lesson that's an hour long. And then we go in to break down the shoulder work. So here we've got shaping and how you can just start with a small movement and you can shape that small movement into some real shoulder control. In these lessons, we're learning about same rein, same foot, and reverse arc. So in these lessons, we're, we're getting the horse to the point where we can do shoulder in and we can define, uh, excuse me, we can control just the shoulder. So we can move the left shoulder left and right whilst maintaining the um, soft round head carriage position that we had already with give to the bit. We're just adding to that with this shoulder control. And by taking control of the shoulders like this, it will allow us to then later take control of the hindquarters independently of the shoulders. So we're going to have a little look there at the older horse and, um, and using the fence and how to ride the lesson and that sort of thing. So it's all broken down into shorter bite-sized lessons for you. These are lessons are designed to have a look at and then go out and teach that one particular one. Now, hips to the fence, a lot of you that have done my free training have already taught hips to the fence, and I put that across in a very short lesson. Here is a much more broken down view of that, and I've used a number of different horses, all that have um, approached it differently and had a different experience of hips to the fence. So we've looked particularly at um, the emotional level of the horse, the young horse, the nervous horse, and I've got an extra thing there on teaching side pass from the ground, which a lot of people like. Now, I like to teach hips to the fence before I get on the horse um, and horses that are, have already been ridden. It's just still a great lesson for learning to stand by the mounting block and you really can do a lot with it and it's a fun lesson and it gets the horse in the engagement zone and for the owners or riders it really shows you how to get the horse into that engagement zone and how to work the horse in that engagement zone so you're really building your bubble of communication teaching little lessons like that where you're not even riding the horse yet necessarily so if we go to first saddling, now a lot of people think, oh, my horse is already wearing a saddle. My horse knows all about the saddle. That might be the case, but I find a lot of horses are a little bit cold back, so they really don't understand the saddle that well. And it's often because they haven't been through proper habituation to the saddle. So they're still perhaps a little bit anxious about the saddle or about the saddling process itself. So if you have a horse that you feel isn't 100% comfortable with the saddle. This is a great series of lessons to work through. And I've got um, the wonderful Tony Flynn here who's fitting a saddle and he talks you through saddle fitting your horse. Now, this is not a saddle fitting course. It, it's three videos, but it will show you whether or not your saddle fits. So you can watch these videos, you can go out and you can say, oh, actually, Tony said X, Y, and Z, this saddle, looks like it doesn't fit my horse well at all so I can do something about that I'll get a professional saddle fitter in and do something about that we discussed the high withered horse which is often a problem 
And then we've got some more advanced saddle habituation exercises. And you can see here um, young Rav, who's, who's working with the, um, I call this the recycling lesson when I tie the bottles up. And there's a, there's a process to work through this. You can't just tie things up to your horse and expect it to be all right. There's a habituation process so that the horse is in the engagement zone and is learning and progressing with this lesson, not being terrified into being quiet because that is very different. So that's another, you know, again, that's one of three lessons and that one's only, you know, five minutes. You can go in there and you can actually learn everything you need to to go out and put that little bit on your horse. So you can see we're not even at the end of page one yet. From there I go to long reining. Again, long reining is another important foundation lesson. So it does begin with a full length DVD. After that, I go into the, all the details that people have trouble with. So habituating your horse to the ropes behind it. And I discuss why I teach it in this way rather than teaching it with the ropes to the wither. Changing direction, heading towards performance. What have we got on the, and I, the common problems. And there are some very common problems with long reining. It's one of the things I do in all my training is I really show you every problem that I can that I can think of because if I've made the mistake if I've seen people make the mistake if I know there's a potential problem I would much rather alert you to it so that you don't have to make it or you can at least be aware that it might come up um, which will make the lesson easier for you and your horse and that is my aim of course all the time and the horses that kick at the lines, different types of rollers we can use, and we discuss the older horse. Long reining is great. I also do something that I call short reining, which is just the same sort of thing, but here I have the, um, it's much more like riding, and it's a great place if you've got a horse that is just starting riding or has been out for a little while or perhaps you're having trouble with transitions, anything like that, short reining is a really good way to um, to sort that out. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. It's something I've only been doing for a couple of years now, but I'm loving it and I do it with all my horses and it's very simple. <laughs> New this week, in fact, is the entire hindquarter control um, series and so we're talking here about getting independent hindquarter control which means that you can move the hindquarters without moving the shoulders and that's really important when you want to get canter lead pick up the correct canter lead when you want to get canter lead flying changes or when you want to start lateral work so that takes you to the end of the first page of um, modules and we go over the page to page two I'm now I'm going to run through these quickly because I'm taking up way too much of your time um, we've got habituation to novel objects again this is my recycling lesson I'm going to talk you through how you do that step by step so that your horse doesn't get scared so that it doesn't become a lesson of flooding where the horse is just given all the information and had to get on with it the round pen, I've got to say, I don't use the round pen much these days at all. But for those of you who want to, there's a full length lesson in there. There's a round pen overview. The reason I don't use it much is because it's very hard not to chase the horse in the round pen. Um, and so I stopped teaching people because it didn't seem to have enough benefit to, to do that. But I go through carefully what not to do in the round pen and then I show you what to teach and how to teach it. So that's turns. Round pen is a good place for teaching the horse about negative reinforcement, but you have to be very specific about what you're teaching. So I teach inside turns, outside turns and come to me. Um, and that's that's about it, really, in the round pen. It's a good place for that. And for certain horses in certain circumstances, it's a, it's a useful training tool. 
but you do have to be careful and that's all outlined there. Trailer loading, again, we all know the problems with trailer loading. So we've got a, um, a whole module on trailer loading. It goes into a lot of detail because it's something that I have to do with a number of horses um, and it's well worth watching um, from start to finish. Again, it comes with a full length lesson, of course, and then it breaks the lesson down into all the little bits and also in trailer loading I've got these three um, full length lessons for you here. One is a first time loader, the next one is a horse that rears and runs off backwards and the last one is a remedial horse that had some real loading issues and we look at all of those horses um, and go through, go through that step by step so that you really get the idea of how you can break it down for your horse and be successful. A special series on young horses, uh, that's tying them up, picking up their feet, doing all sorts of things just for the young horse. And that also means the educationally young horse. Stops, stops and back up. You'll notice how these two things come quite late on. We've got all that forward movement and understanding of the cues before we attempt to teach the horse to stop or stop and back up. Um, of course, you know, we've put stops in there. The horse already knows how to stop, but this is perfecting the stops. The canter, a lot of people have trouble with the canter. We talk about picking up the correct lead, horses that kick or bark in canter, horses that fall out of canter and horses that rush into canter are all things covered there. The off the track section, we, I look at a couple of different horses and I take them through all of the training. Um, so the bridling, give to the bit, long reining, all of the training specifically for these off the track horses. The horses that have raced do have um, some training. It's just not terribly useful for us. So um, I, I, I tell you why and I tell you how you can um, rectify that. Working equitation, we look at the different obstacles. So whatever riding discipline you have, working equitation has some great obstacles that you can set up in your um, in your arena and this talks you through how to ride the patterns of those obstacles, which is pretty fun. And then on the last page, we've got the case studies which looks at individual horses and also a links and resources section. So I've got some checklists which people are really enjoying actually. The, the checklists, you can print them off and I have a video in here of how to use them and there's checklists here that you can print off for all of the uh, major um, foundation lessons and then you just colour them in and say how your horse is progressing. And it means that you can work your horse over five days and you can see how the progress is going and you have a record of it, which is really useful. All right, there you are. So there is a quick summary of how you would go about going back to basics with the Candle Equine online training system. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sorry, it was a bit, um, it was a bit long today. I try not to be that long but I wanted you to have a look around it. I find you know when I've been building this the one thing I've found because I've looked at a lot of online training systems and um, the thing I found was it is very hard to find what you're looking for. So I've got a search button up there so let's say I'm looking for bucking because my horse is bucking so I'm going to put bucking in and Everything that comes up in answer to that, so there's a canter one, there's one in the novel objects, there's one in the first saddling. I can just go straight to that and I can watch that lesson if that's, you know, the way I want to do it, um, if I have a particular problem. So don't forget that search bar up there because that is really useful. Also, you'll, you'll see um, on my... Um, in oh, excuse me, on the front page when you when you buy a membership, that, that I don't have a minimum length of membership. So at any time as a member, 
if you're in my library or in the training, you can go up here to settings. And that's going to tell you about um, your membership. And you see up here on the right hand side, credit card information. All you need to do is click in there and you can cancel your membership at any time. I really, it's really, really very important to me that you're a member when you find it useful. I want people that are going to go out there and use it and engage with me and ask me questions and have fun with it. I'm not really interested in just collecting your money. That's not what the system is for. The system is to help horses and horse owners train their horses. So please don't feel because you haven't found the credit card information place to cancel that I'm trying to keep you as a member. I'm not at all. and I'm very happy to help you cancel your membership if you haven't got time. You know, I haven't yet, in the years I've been doing this, I have not yet had one person cancel their membership because they didn't like the material. I've had a few people, you know, contact me and say, I haven't been able to cancel. Can you do it for me? And I always write back and say, yes, of course I can. It's done. There you are. Hope to see you back again. And those that do that write straight back to me and say, oh, yes, I will be back. I just haven't got time at the moment. I'm moving house or I'm doing this or I haven't got a horse or whatever it is. But they, they've all loved the training and all bar none want to come back as soon as they can. So, you know, I really, really want you to understand that. This is a training system and I want members that are engaged with it because I've set it up so to help horses. That's my main aim is to help people and help horses. And I've got it set at that monthly price, which is really very affordable so that I can reach more horses and more people. So please share this video with other people that you think might be interested because that is my aim now to try and keep the price of the Candy Work Wine online training system down so that we can reach more horses with these ethical and safe methods. I hope to see you in there sometime soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Woohoo.